Hey beautiful beaters, it's Gina from OrchidandOpal.com and I'm back today with another tutorial. I will leave a timestamp below if you want to just skip right to the beading, but I want to kind of tell you a little bit of background on this bracelet. So we received these little owl beads in, I think it was the February uh, 2019, the recent dollar bead box that we had received prior to the last one. And they're just so cute. It was a strand of three different colors and the strand contained these two colors plus a black with, I think it was a silver wash. And I loved how these two went together. They went together really well just because they both had that gold wash on them. And I wanted to come up with a unique way to use these that really showed them off. So I came up with this design just after playing around quite a bit on my bead mat. I wanted to kind of showcase these little owls going vertically instead of just being strung horizontally. And I was looking through my stash of beads. I have my beads mainly displayed on my wall, at least all the specialty ones, so they're easy for me to see. And I really liked how they went with these table cut square beads. So these are 10 by 10 millimeter. The owls are like a seven by 15 millimeter, and I will leave links to all of these different products below. They may not be the exact specific colors, but at least it will help you out to figure out what it is that I used. So anyway, I just decided to alternate these different colored owls with these square beads that I've had in my stash for a long time because I thought they went so well together. And then I just did some accenting with some gold seed beads and some three millimeter fire polish beads that I also had in my stash. So this bracelet's a little bit shorter than I would typically make, although it fits me just fine. The actual beading portion of this bracelet is actually slightly less than six inches from wire guardian to wire guardian, which is why I used a larger clasp on this bracelet. And that is because I only had six owls to work with. So if you have more beads to work with and you have a larger wrist, you'll definitely need to take that into account and just add extra beads onto this design. I also want to show you how versatile this design is. You can actually search your stash and possibly use some other beads you may have forgotten about or just haven't figured out how to use yet. So I was actually looking through my stash. I found more of these like goldfish type beads and I thought they looked really fun with these seashells that I've had in my stash forever. So you can use them with that. Um, the other thing I like is that this design is a little bit asymmetrical. So as you can see, the top portion, if you will, of this design of these little beaded embellishments are just slightly different from the bottom. And I think that works really well because the owl beads down there and these fish beads, for example, are asymmetrical. So if you have anything like this that you just haven't used because you don't really know what to do with them, this might be the design for you. I also tried one design with these tulip kind of check glass beads that I've had in my stash for a while too. So they worked well, they weren't quite as tall, so I did accent them with a little green three millimeter fire polish bead down below there because I thought it looked cute, you know, like the stem of the little flower, but it also just kind of lengthened that size there. So just experiment with different size beads, different shape beads, but maybe this design will kind of springboard you and help you think of another way to use those fun check glass shapes. Here is one final design that I created using more of those same size owl beads. These had come in a different bead box subscription. And then I used some of these larger glass oval beads that had come from a recent bead crate. So in this one, I did use more owls. I did use eight owls as opposed to six that I had available to use in the turquoise and gold version. And this bracelet turned out to be just about six inches exactly from wire guardian to wire guardian. And then as I suggest often, you can very easily adjust the length of a bracelet by adding extra jumper split rings or a larger clasp, that kind of thing. So keep that in mind too, that if it seems a little bit snug, just add a larger clasp, just add extra jumper split rings, and it's a great way to adjust the size. So I actually don't have any more owl beads or anything like that to complete this tutorial today. So I'm going to be taking this bracelet apart and reconstructing it on camera together with you so that you can see exactly how I made it. So real quick before we get started, let's talk about the list of materials. Again, I have everything listed below, but let's run down everything that you're going to need. So depending on the size of your bracelet, you will need six to eight different 
owl beads or something in a similar size. Again, these are a seven by 15 millimeter. Some sites have them listed as eight by 14, but something similar to that. Also, I have used in this design seven of these square beads. You will need seven to nine of these types of beads depending on the length that you need it. These are a 10 by 10 millimeter check glass table cut window bead. I also used 28 of these little fire polish three millimeter beads. So depending on the length, once again, you'll need between 28 and 36 of those. You will need, of course, some beading thread. I'm using six pound fire line that I love. It doesn't have a lot of give to it and it doesn't break as easily as a lot of other beading thread that I've used. You'll also need your jump or split rings to attach your clasp. You'll need the clasp of your choice. You'll also need wire guardians if you're into using those. I love using these and I've talked about them before lots of times. So you will need two of those in this project if you decide to use them. If not, you'll just be doing a loop of seed beads and connecting your jump ring to that. And then finally, of course, you'll need some 11 seed beads and then the usual jewelry pliers, scissors, bead surface, and measuring device. So all that being said, let's go ahead and thread on approximately five five to six feet of beading thread onto our needle and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so I have everything deconstructed from that bracelet and separated out. And obviously you're gonna need a beading needle too. This is a horribly bent size 10 beading needle. Bent part doesn't bother me too much. It happens when you bead weave. Anyway, I'm going to be attaching a bead to the end of my thread, and it is going to be a stop bead for this project. I don't always add these, but for this one, I just find it helpful. So find any old bead, anything at all. I find that it's helpful to find one that doesn't match your project. That way it won't get in the mix of things. So I just found a random bead, and I'm leaving about a six inch tail at the end of that, and all I did was give this a little loose single knot half hitch knot type of deal on the end there so that I can easily take it off when I'm ready to weave that end back in. So first thing you want to do is you want to string on five of your seed beads so go ahead and pick up five of those 11 O's. Then you want to pick up a three millimeter fire polish, one more seed bead, and then go ahead and pick up your square bead if that's the type of bead you're using, and then one more seed bead. So you're gonna have this type of sequence on your needle right here. You got your five, your three millimeter, an 11-0, your square bead, and an 11-0. So go ahead and string that all the way down, just like that to your stop bead. And now you're gonna go up through that square bead. You're gonna skip over the little seed bead on the bottom, and you're gonna go up through the square bead and up through the 11-0 that's right on top of that. and pull that nice and tight so you should have something that looks like this. Now we're ready to pick up another fire polish and we're gonna pick up four seed beads. Now you can pick up one of your owls. I'm going to string it from the top hole down and then pick up one more seed bead so you should have this sequence on your needle. Pull that down all the way to your other beads that you just added. And it's going to sit kind of like that and we're going to go through the owl bead again just skipping over that last 11-0 that we added and going from bottom to top up through the owl and up through the one seed bead that is above it. So we're going through those beads right there. Go ahead and pull it nice and tight. That little seed bead's gonna sit there on the end. And we wanna pull that as close as we can to our other beads. So this is what you should have so far. Now pick up three more seed beads. Then pick up a fire polish. Pick up another seed bead pick up a square bead, and one more seed bead. So again, this is the sequence that you should have on your needle right now. Pull that all the way down to meet your other beads. And just like we did before, you are going to go up through the square and up through the 11-0 right on top of it, 
skipping over the 11 O that's on the bottom. Pull it nice and tight towards your work and you have something like this. So this is what we're going to be doing all the way across our bracelet. We're going to be doing our sequence of square, owl, square, owl, and so on and so forth until we are at the end of our bracelet. I'm going to end the bracelet with another square. Right now we're ready to go ahead and add on another owl. This time it's going to be a gold one since that's the other color that I'm alternating with. So we want to pick up another fire polish bead. We want to pick up four seed beads the owl, and I'm doing the gold one because that's next in my sequence of colors, and I'm stringing that again from top to bottom because I want them all to be in the same position, and then one more seed bead. So you're going to have this sequence on your needle. Go ahead and pull those all the way down. There you go. You got another one sitting right there. You're going to skip over this 11 0 seed bead and go up through the owl and up through the seed bead right on top of the owl and pull tight. Okay, so that's what you have so far. Go ahead and do the same sequence all the way down till you get to your last bead, whichever bead you want to end on, and then I'll show you how to add the wire guardian and come around the other way so that we can move on to the next steps. I'm going to go ahead and just speed up the video while I'm beating and that way you don't have to sit through me doing the whole thing at normal speed. everyone so once the bracelet is almost complete we're at the very last square bead here so I'm just going to complete the sequence and add the wire guardian so I'm going to pick up a three millimeter bead I'm going to pick up five seed beads and then I'm going to pick up my wire guardian going through one side of that so you should have this on your needle I'm going to pull that down to meet my other work and just like we do with wire guardians, we're going to be going right around through the other little opening there on the other side and making sure our thread is right in that little groove right there and not off to the side. So like that. Now pick up five more seed beads. Okay, and then pick up another one of the fire polish beads and this little seed bead right here that's poking out on the bottom on this other side of the square bead we're going to be going through that so have five seed beads on your needle plus a fire polish after you've come through your wire guardian and go through that little seed bead at the bottom of that square now if you don't have wire guardians or don't plan to use them all you'll be doing is making a loop of seed beads on this end, so string instead of maybe five, a wire guardian and five, maybe try it out with, say, 12 seed beads. Go ahead and string them on plus a fire polish and then go through the little seed bead at the bottom. That's totally up to you. So now we're going to be working back down this way to complete the other side of our bracelet. We have already come through this little seed bead right here. Go ahead and pick up another fire polish bead and three more seed beads. Alright, so once you have those on your needle, go ahead and go through this little seed bead that's sitting at the bottom of the owl that you get to next. Go ahead and pull that and you see how it's kind of coming together. So after that you want to pick up three more seed beads and a fire polish bead and go through the seed bead that's at the bottom of the next square bead that you get to. So we're just sewing everything together just like that. Okay, another fire polish and three more seed beads. Go through the little seed bead that is at the bottom of the next owl that we get to. Just like that. So you can see that we're adding two fire polish here on the bottom underneath these square beads that just completes the pattern so that that part's symmetrical on both sides and just like we did before three more seed beads one fire polish bead 
and go through the seed bead that's sticking out of the bottom of the next square that you get to. So I think you get the idea, but let's just go ahead and complete this together. Fire polish, three seed beads, go through the seed bead at the bottom. Three seed beads of fire polish and go through this seed bead. So I try to mention it for those who are new on my channel, but I've been asked before, I do have a Patreon account and that is where you can support artists by following them and contributing as little as a dollar a month to that artist and there are perks to that. I have perk setups that you will receive special discounts to my online shop where I sell the jewelry that I've made that I featured on my videos. And there's different discounts depending on the level that you decide to sign up for. And I've also added two new levels by request. So one is a $25 level where at that rate of support, I will actually hand make you a pair of earrings every single month and send them to you. Now that is for my US patrons. If you're out of the country, there would be a charge for the shipping on that. But if you are in the US, I will ship those for free included in your monthly amount. And then there is a $50 level where I will actually send you a handmade necklace and earring set every single month that you would like to sign up for. But I don't want anyone to feel obligated to follow me on Patreon. I'm just happy to have you viewing my videos, but it is appreciated more than you know if you do decide to do that. It really helps to enable me to keep creating these free tutorials for you guys, as well as be able to purchase better equipment and supplies to keep improving on my craft and my videos in the future future. So thank you to all my patrons that I currently have so much. You guys really truly are appreciated. I know you don't have to do that and that means the world to me that you have decided to help support me in that way. So thank you so much. All right so we are at the end of this side of our bracelet and we have our little stop bead here. You can go ahead and remove that. I'm just going to use my needle to loosen up this thread just a little bit and take off the stop bead. And just be careful because you do have five little loose seed beads on that end. So what you're going to do is you're going to string on five seed beads onto your needle. And then you're going to go through one end of your wire guardian and slide that down just like that. Then you're going to go around through the other side of your wire guardian. And then through those five seed beads on the other side that are connected to the tail thread. Okay, so you're gonna have this right here. Now your tail thread is still gonna be a little loose. So my suggestion is to go ahead and hold the tail thread in your non-dominant hand. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna hold it in my left hand. Just hold it so that your beads are not loose on your bracelet. Everything's kind of nice and snug. And now I'm coming through this fire polish bead. We went through the five seed beads and I actually went through the fire polish bead as well. So go ahead and do that and then I'm going underneath the thread bridge next to the fire polish bead and I'm making one little half hitch knot. That's just going to help keep everything snug while we continue on. And then at the end of our bracelet we're going to be tying several more knots and weaving everything in. So everything's going to be fine. So at this point, we're gonna be going around our bracelet again, and we're gonna be popping in one seed bead in between these two fire polish, and then we're gonna be adding our little embellishments over the owl. So we're coming out of that fire polish bead, we wanna pick up one seed bead, go through the next fire polish bead, and also go through the next two seed beads that you get to. So what that's gonna do, as you can see, is that is going to pop a seed bead right in there in between the two fire polish. So it's gonna look like two seed beads sitting on top of the square. You're coming out of the two seed beads right after that fire polish. And this is where you're gonna add a little embellishment. So pick up three seed beads on your needle 
and then go through the two seed beads right before the very next wire polish, just like that. So when you pull it, it's going to create this little embellishment over top of the owl, just like that. So you're coming out of the next fire polish bead, and again, we wanna add a seed bead in between the two fire polish beads there. So go through the next fire polish after you have your seed bead on your needle, and go through the next two seed beads. Now you want to add three seed beads to your needle. Once again, making a little embellishment over top of the owl, then go through the two seed beads right before the next fire polish bead that you get to. Pull those. Pop in a seed bead in between the two fire polish, going through the next two seed beads as well. There you go. Pick up three seed beads and embellish. And just do this all the way down this one side of your bracelet. Okay, so we're adding on our last seed bead in between the two fire polish. And I'm also going to be going through all these beads around the loop. So those five seed beads there, I'm going to go through the wire guardian as well. I'm going to go around that. So I'm coming out of one end of it. I'm going to loop around and go through the other side of it, as well as the five seed beads I get to next, as well as the next fire polish bead. So it's just turning us around and we're going up the other side. And these are the last steps to our beading. So we're again going to be popping in a seed bead right there in between these two fire polish beads just like we did on the other side. So pick up a seed bead once you're coming out of your fire polish. And then go through the next fire polish that you get to as well as the next three seed beads right below the owl. Okay. Once you're there, go ahead and pick up three seed beads. We're gonna add our embellishment below the owl. We're gonna skip over the seed bead that's directly below the owl, and we're gonna go through the next three seed beads as well as the next fire polish that we get to. So that's gonna add our little embellishment there on the bottom, just like that. Pop in another seed bead in between your two fire polish. So go through the next fire polish and the three seed beads that you get to, just like that. Add three seed beads to your needle. Skip over the seed bead that's directly below the owl and go through the seed beads after that, as well as the next fire polish. And just keep following those steps. I'm going to go ahead and speed it up till we get to the end of the bracelet. All right, so we're at our very last little grouping of fire polish. We're going to slip in our last seed bead right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and go through that fire polish as well as all these seed beads before the wire guardian. And I'm going to loop around and do some half hitch knots. So I'm just going to keep going, looping around, going through these seed beads right here. Again, making sure my thread sits nestled into the wire guardian nicely. I'm going to go under the thread there right after those seed beads and make a little half hitch knot, making a loop and going through it. And I'm going to continue on through the thread path and make about three knots. You can do as many of those as you want, however many that you're comfortable with to where you feel like your bracelet is secure. So I'm going to make another one right here. Go through some more beads.
Make another one right there, go through some more beads and so on. So do that as much as you'd like. And then go ahead and add a needle onto your tail thread and do the same thing. Just follow the thread path, but make a little half hitch knot, go through some beads, make a little half hitch knot, and repeat that process till you're comfortable with how secure your bracelet feels. Then we're gonna meet back and we're gonna add our clasp and jump rings and we're gonna try it on and see how it looks. All right, so here's our finished bracelet minus our jump rings and clasp. I already have my jump rings still attached to my clasp from when I took the bracelet apart. And so I'm just gonna open that up and pop this on one side. And then I'm going to pop this on the other side and we will be all done. These aren't terribly, terribly thick wires on these jump rings so I'm able to do it with just one pair of pliers and my fingers and that is the finished bracelet right here I love the way it came out with these little owls so let's go ahead I'm gonna try it on so here's the finished bracelet on I hope this tutorial was enjoyable and helpful for you I hope it was easy to follow please feel free to leave me any comments or questions down below and let me know what kind you decided to make I'm sure there's all kinds of variations on this design that you could try out with beads from your stash don't forget to enter my giveaway that I have going on through the 17th for my my one year YouTube anniversary. I'll be giving away three products from bbcraft.com as well as one winner is going to receive the March 2019 dollar bead box. So really excited about that. Definitely go enter if you haven't already. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and for being with me. I have more unboxings to come this week so stay tuned for that and lots more fun coming up. So I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and as always, happy beading! If you enjoyed this video, I'd love for you to give it a big thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos. Check out the information section under the video for links to my social media handles and other helpful info. And feel free to check out my shop at orchidanopal.com. Thanks for watching!